Well, thank you everyone for uh, being here this morning. My name is Regina. Uh, I work for a company called BrightHive. Uh, and the title of this talk is Leave Your Inhibitions at the Database Connection. At the 11th hour, I added what I think is a more communicative subtitle. So I'm sorry if your expectations are being let down, but this is also going to be focused on the Django ORM. Um, hope that's not a surprise to anyone. <laughs> uh, so this is kind of a technical talk that's framed within a more personal narrative. Uh, so there's going to be um, a fair amount of code conversation, but also some discussion about my own personal journey. Uh, so let's begin. Um, I have a 15 months old, 15 month old son, and he had the very good fortune of being watched by his grandparents or my parents for the first 12 to 13 months of his life. So not too long ago, I placed him in the very capable hands of a nanny. And every morning, he greeted the day with sadness, anxiousness, and basically uh, the fear that one would encounter peering into the eyes of death. Here is a dramatic rendering of a typical weekday morning at my house. Uh, so I can actually very closely relate to the spectrum of emotions that my son felt uh, when I was flung full force into the world of Python and Django. Uh, so I came to Django with very limited coding experience. I started my company at a Python shop as a freshly minted grad of Dev Bootcamp where I had learned Ruby, JavaScript, SQL, but not a line of Python. I was also in a situation where I was trying to understand and navigate this transition from one career into a new career as a technologist. So all at once, I had a new professional identity and I had a new buffet of technical skills to ingest. And so naturally I found myself clinging to things that felt familiar and evading things that felt alien. Now eventually with much encouragement I did let go of my inhibitions and I ventured into more unknown territory. So that's what I'm going to talk about today is this journey. This journey from the familiar, from SQL, to the Django ORM, the unfamiliar, the alien. And I'm hoping that this narrative will offer a little bit of guidance and perspective on how we as technologists can overcome inhibitions that may hinder our growth. Uh, so an overview of the talk. Um, I'm going to introduce some strategies for interacting with the database in Django. Um, I'm then going to discuss my initial personal preferences. preferences. So typically writing raw SQL um, instead of using the ORM. And then describe why I personally came to use the ORM, but I'm hoping that some of the reasons I give uh, for why the ORM can be a superior choice uh, will be useful to really any coder. And finally, I'll offer some high-level, non-technical takeaways. Um, I am going to be sharing a lot of code examples. So I have a GitHub gist, which you can access here, which has the full examples if you'd rather look at those and not look at the slides. Fortunately, I think this room is its small enough that everyone will be able to read everything on the slide, so it shouldn't be an issue. But if you want to revisit or if you get lost and want to look back at something, um, feel free to go here. So Django supports two ways of interacting with a database. Uh, the first way is the default database abstraction API or the Django ORM. So the ORM, it lets you create, retrieve, update, delete objects in your database using Python and Django syntax. So one way to think about this is um, the ORM is a way to interact with your database from the comfort of your own home. So not a lot of context switching involved. Um, let's look at an illustrative example. Uh, let's say we have this models file, and in it we have defined a pasta class. Very simple, we just have two attributes. So there's a name attribute, which is a character field, and a price per pound attribute, which is a decimal field. And now, let's imagine that we have a database that's populated with pasta objects. And I am looking for a particular kind of pasta. I'm looking for bucatini. Uh, if you're curious, that's the, it's a hollow pasta, and 
typically served in Rome with a spicy red sauce, very tasty. Um, so the way that I would retrieve my pasta object from the database is I will call the objects manager on the pasta model. This is just going to instantiate a query set. From there, I can call the get function and then pass in my conditions. So we end up then with hollow pasta equals pasta dot objects dot get where name equals Bucatini and that's going to return a pasta object. Um, now let's say another example. Let's say that we want um, really expensive pasta. We want pasta that costs five dollars or more per pound. Um, so in this case, again, we use that objects manager and the pasta model, but here we call filter and we pass in our conditions. So luxurious pasta equals pasta to objects dot filter where price per pound is greater than or equal to five. Uh, returns, in this case, a query set, so a collection of objects as opposed to a single object. Since with filter, the assumption is you're going to return zero or more objects, so a list as opposed to a singular entry. Um, now there's another way that you can get at your database in Django, and that is by using um, raw SQL. And Django supports a couple ways of doing this. One of them is with the raw manager. Um, so let's talk about how this works. Uh, first, we begin with a query. So select everything from pasta where name equals, um, in this case, we're, we have a parameterized query, so we would just pass in whatever pasta we're looking for. So that turns out like stuffed pasta equals pasta to objects. Now we call our raw manager, we pass in our query, and then we pass in our argument to fulfill the conditions of that parameter. This returns something a little different, a raw query set, um, but that behaves very much like an ordinary query set. Another way to do this, though, is with a direct database connection. Um, so in this case, uh, I want to find pasta that is uh, $1 or less. So what I'm going to do is open up a cursor object. Cursor object, it's basically just a structure that enables communication with your database. Um, then we define our query, select everything from pasta where price per pound is less than or equal to a dollar. Um, then we pass that query into our execute function, which we call on our cursor object, and then we retrieve the results with fetch all. This is probably um, uh, the most unusual thing that gets returned. Uh, so not an object, not a query set, not a raw query set, but we have a list of tuples. Uh, so my very first Django projects, actually for quite some time, I'd say a couple years, my, my Django projects were displaying um, a strong preference for opening up a cursor and passing in raw SQL, probably because it was the furthest removed from the Django ORM. Um, I really was, I found raw SQL to be pretty easy to read, quick to understand, and it was um, not as mysterious as the black box of the Django ORM. Um, now, I mentioned that I worked for a Python shop, so from 2016 to 2019, um, I worked for DataMade. It's a civic technology company in Chicago uh, that builds uh, digital tools for nonprofits, government organizations, municipal organizations. And DataMade is a champion of open, si open source technology, so fortunately, I'm able to actually show a lot of code from out in the wild. Uh, that is open source, and I provided links in that GitHub just if you want to revisit any of it. Um, so great, the first project I want to provide an example from is LA Metro Council Matic. This is an online tool that monitors all things related to the Los Angeles Metro Board of Directors. So these are the folks who are setting policy, coordinating, planning, funding, building, operating transportation programs throughout LA County. So at heart, LA Metro Councilmatic is this awareness building government transparency tool. I was the lead developer on LA Metro for a little over two years, so it actually um, illustrates very nicely this journey from writing a lot of SQL to more adventurously employing the Django ORM. Um, so to start, I wanted to look at an example where I'm using raw SQL, but I think that the ORM probably would have better served this particular situation. So we're gonna talk about the person detail view. Um, person detail view, it returns information about a Metro board member. Some of that information includes 
a listing of the memberships, the committee memberships that that person holds. So let's unpack how we retrieve this data. So here's the SQL query that runs to get it. Um, so first, uh, we find information in the membership and organization stable, right? So we need the organization name, the organization slug, so we can link to it, and then the membership role. So joining between the membership and the organization tables. Um, then we add some filters, right? So we filter for particular board members. Then we're only interested in recent memberships. And finally, we're filtering out uh, the board of directors. So the board of directors is considered an organization, even though they're a parent organization to all committees, but they're still all sort of cobbled together in the organization table. Um, something, if this data seems weird, just a footnote really quickly, we are acquiring the councilmatic data by scraping the Legistar API and the Legistar website. So we actually don't have too much control over what actually turns up in our councilmatic database. Because uh, there's definitely some fixes where you could be like, why don't you just like change this in your database and you'd have a much simpler query. Unfortunately, we don't have that degree of flexibility since it's being derived from another source. Um, Anyway, so finally, then we have this custom order by using a case statement. Uh, so we want chair, vice chair, member, so it's non-alphabetical. Raw SQL, I think, works pretty nicely. Uh, in some ways, it, it does facilitate that join between two tables. And also, I think it's, it works pretty nicely to have that, that custom order by. So could we accomplish this with the ORM? We sure can, and in fact, I, I really like this solution. Um, so let's talk about, this is theoretical, it's not actually deployed as such. Um, it's something I put together for this presentation. Um, but I, I do, I do like, like the ORM solution. Uh, so what's going on here, we have the membership model, we're calling our objects manager on that. Then we call select related. That is just going to follow foreign key relationships and then allow for, for multiple tables to be considered in your query set. Then we add our filters, so filtering for a certain person, only considering recent end dates, and then we're excluding the board of directors. Um, finally, in order to accomplish that custom ordering, we're adding an annotation um, with a role order and then we order by that. So I would say that I prefer this hypothetical ORM solution. I think it's really communicative. I think it's very clean. Um, also, the end result is a query set, so it's much, it's much more closely bound to the world and the conventions of Django, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But I think um, at this point in the talk, the superiority of one solution over the other is sort of ancillary. I think the more meaningful point is that a couple years ago, I would never have imagined using the ORM in this way. Uh, when I started at Datamate, I really only understood the possibilities of SQL. So I was a career changer and I was this amateur Rubyist writing Python. Uh, I was gravitating towards familiar things. So I, I typically used SQL to get out a database and I overlooked all of the really cool possibilities that Django has. So this, I think, leads me to a critical statement that a lot of this talk hangs on, which is, Familiarity should not be the sole impetus in selecting the best tool. Um, so that probably seems really obvious, right? But this sort of axiom, like statement, can be difficult to remember. Because when you're working in familiar spaces, you feel comfort. And that kind of comfort can bring about complacency, which brings about narrow-mindedness in our coding practices, which is more or less what I encountered my first year or so at DataMade. So how can we leave these more comfortable, safe havens? So I'm going to identify a few reasons why I personally started to use the ORM, but I hope these are um, good arguments for using the ORM over raw SQL um, for anyone. Um, so why the ORM? Authoritative sources. The Django docs prescribe using the ORM. Uh, there's a couple reasons. One of them is enhanced security. Uh, the other one is a performance gain. We'll get into those a little bit. A second reason is aesthetics. So you have less lines of code to, to comprehend without doing any sort of context switching. 
And finally, query sets are very cool and they're really fun to work with. Um, great, so let's start by diving into the Django docs. Uh, the Django docs state, if you find yourself needing to write a SQL query that is too complex for Django's database mapper to handle, you can fall back on writing SQL by hand. So the language is describing SQL as a kind of second resort or a regression. Um, it's something to fall back on, right? So here the recommendation is, is kind of, it's implicit. But the Django doc authors are actually pretty direct. They offer some matter of fact guidance later on. So let's look at this, um, the very top of the performing raw SQL queries page. Um, there's a little alert box and it says, explore the ORM before using raw SQL, bold font, exclamation point. The Django ORM provides many tools to express queries without writing raw SQL. And the authors of the documentation have very good reason for this kind of remark, um, and that is security. So directly below that previous box, we have this alert box. Uh, warning, you should be very careful whenever you write raw SQL. Every time you use it, you should properly escape any parameters that the user can control by using params in order to protect against SQL injection attacks. So basically, if you're not handling your SQL parameters correctly, your database could be compromised by attackers. So people who would be passing in um, queries that retrieve sensitive data or queries that would alter your database. Um, what's nice is that Django, even though it is running SQL in the background, um, it's more difficult to introspect, uh, which means that sort of out of the box, you're getting protected from SQL injection. Um, another reason why the Django docs recommend the ORM, this ORM before SQL paradigm, um, is because with raw SQL, the results need to be shaped into more, men, more amenable data types. So by default, the Python database API will return results without their field names, which means you end up with a list of values rather than a dict, so we saw that the list of tuples. At a small performance and memory cost, you can return results as a dict. Uh, so let's revisit LA Metro Council Matic. Um, so after we queried the database to get those committee memberships, we have to transform the results. Um, I decided to use a named tuple. I, I think it was just more manageable in the template. Um, in any case, this kind of rehydration is going to come with a cost. So what are we doing? So we have our cursor, we execute our SQL function. Then we have to iterate over the cursor description. The cursor description is a read-only tuple that describes your results. So this is a way then to isolate the field names that you're retrieving. So it was the um, organization name, the slug, and then the, the, the membership role. Um, great, then we instantiate a name tuple with the, those field names. And then finally we unpack each row in the results into that named tuple. So it is a performance cost, it's small, it's very, very small. I mean, it's, it's pretty much inconsequential in the case of LA Metro because it's such small data. Um, but I think another point here is this is, this, is a, this is a consequential amount of additional code to write and to later on comprehend. And I think this brings me to my next point which is somewhat of a subjective one, which is aesthetics. So when you eliminate these steps for transformation and rehydration, I would say that you end up with code that's cleaner, more manageable, easier to talk about. So code that is shareable, maintainable, and in a word, that's more beautiful. Um, now, whether or not you agree with this, aesthetics set aside, something that I think is objectively cool are query sets. So query sets, one of the nicest things is that they are lazy. So you can order them, you can filter them, you can slice and dice them without ever hitting the database. Um, when you instantiate a query set, that doesn't even entail hitting the database. So this means that they're pretty malleable and they're pretty flexible without an obvious performance cost. Um, they're also data rich and iterable, so what do I mean by that? Well, when you evaluate your query sets, that typically happens within a template. You're iterating over them. Each iteration returns an object, and that object 
is going to contain all of the information about the model, sometimes more if it's annotated. That's a little bit different than our made from scratch named tuples. Um, with those, those made from scratch data types, the accessible data is restricted to the limitations of that original query, right? So in this case, um, the results of that membership list, I don't have all of the data that's in a membership object. I only have what was provided in that original query for what I queried for. Um, great. So for those reasons, I found myself being more adventurous with using uh, the Django ORM. So I wanted to share a couple examples from my later period at DataMade. Um, this was actually, I'd say, the last six months I was working there when I really was coming to love and accept the Django ORM. So we'll first talk about a project called Coordinated Entry Screening. This is a web and SMS survey tool that guides people experiencing homelessness to appropriate resources in Chicago and the surrounding suburbs. Um, so with the SMS tool, a user would text a four-digit code to a phone number, um, and then they would walk through a survey, and as they answer questions, they'd be recommended resources. So the four-digit code that they text is mapped to a specific location, and this mapping helps us know the number of times that these location-specific surveys are being accessed. So part of this tool has a Dashman ad board where registered users can log in and see these types of data points. Um, so here's just a snippet of that. Where are users? This table shows the number of times location code has been used. So this is fake data, but location code 0006, and then the number of times used was two times. Um, so let's see how we get that data. Uh, pretty simple, right? We have our, using the ORM, so we have a tree object. Tree is, um, that's the model name for a survey. So we call our objects manager on the tree model, and then we annotate that with times used. So this is a value that's being derived by counting the number of sessions that are associated with a tree. Then we have a couple exclusions to make, so we exclude surveys that get triggered with the keyword connect, because that's just a generic um, non-location specific surveys, so we're not interested in that data. And then we also exclude surveys that have never been used. This for me is just like, such a wonderfully concise, immaculate, crystal clear solution. Um, so let's look at what, what a hypothetical SQL solution would be like. So here's, here's one possibility, I actually just modified the SQL that was getting run in the background of this, um, this ORM call. So this is, this is close. I, I tried to kind of improve what Django was literally doing, um, but this is very close. So what we have is um, we're selecting the values that we need. Um, so our tree ID, the tree trigger, the number of times a session was used. That entails a join between our tree table and our session table. And then we exclude, so where tree trigger is not connect, and then where the session ID is not zero. I don't find this terribly attractive, so the SQL requires a little bit of decoding. Um, it's a little bit verbose, I mean, at least in comparison to that, right? Um, also, we have to remember that there's going, there would have to be some sort of transformation or rehydration of our results into um, an easier to use data type. Um, so the last example I want to talk about is one of the more advanced uses of the Django ORM that I could find um, while I was working at DataMade. So we're going to return to LA Metro Councilmatic. We're going to look at the events list view. So this will return all events, and it will return those events with their related media URLs. So these are links to recordings of Metro meetings in Spanish and English. Um, this, as you'll notice, the complicated thing about this is they would, they have to appear in this non-alphabetical order, so with the English um, listed before the Spanish link. Great, so 
let's talk about how the ORM assists in building out that events list view. Uh, so first, we go to our models.py file, and we instantiate LA Metro Event Manager custom class, and then we define a with media function. So this is really like the heartbeat of all of it. Um, what this does is we first create a query set of media objects, and we annotate that query set with an O label, and the O label assigns the value of zero to Spanish language media URLs. Um, Again, this is the problem with the, the raw source data. The only way that we can decipher whether or not a media URL is Spanish or English is that we'll have a note assigned to it that ends with this SAP parenthetical. Um, so that's what's, that's what's going on there. Uh, and then we order by that label. Uh, the thing that gets returned, though, is a prefetch related, wherein we're passing a prefetch object um, that, that contains the, that, that custom media query set. Now then, we go to our views. In the views, where we want to retrieve all of our LA Metro events, um, we instantiate our event query set, and then we call the with media function. Um, but what we're really doing is we're calling that prefetch related with the prefetch object that is supplying that, that custom base query set. So this, this, this whole thing to me is like pretty astonishing what the Django ORM facilitates. And I can't really imagine um, a comparable solution with raw SQL. Um, so I arrived at these types of more advanced, more eloquent ORM solutions through a lot of experience, but also by acquiring greater comfort with unknowns. So I'm going to offer a few non-technical adage like takeaways. Um, the first of these is do not code in a vacuum. So seek encouragement to explore new patterns by talking to your colleagues and friends, uh, going on the job market even if you're not looking for a job. I felt like I learned a lot when I was looking for a new position about the ORM that I previously did not. Um, yelling into the internet and hoping that someone responds. But the point is just try to find a way to insert your coding practices into a constructive dialogue with other voices. Be okay with starting over. So if you're finding that your solutions are keeping you in a place of familiarity and comfort, but at the same time, you're pushing the boundaries of that familiar space, so you might be doing something that's unconventional, uh, that might be a time to consider an alternative, um, even if that means starting from scratch, starting over. And finally, try to privilege joy, not fear, when encountering unknowns. So I'm going to conclude where I began with an anecdote about my son. So my son, the very same toddler who experienced a grave sense of fear when he encountered a new childcare situation, he also experiences boundless joy in his day-to-day -day exploration of his unknown world. Um, so typically we'll go for walks and he'll you know, be picking up and throwing rocks, petting dogs, pointing and waving at people, putting all sorts of things in his mouth. Um, and this, this emotional state resonates with me now. Um, very recently, I started a new role at a company called BrightHive. We build data trust. This is a solution for um, securely and safely sharing information across organizations. At BrightHive, I've learned a lot of new things. Um, React, Airflow, uh, Dockerizing everything, including my pie tests. Uh, so, I'm able though, as learning these new things, encountering unknowns, I'm able to feel a certain amount of enjoy because I resolved those internalized in inhibitions that I had when I started at DataMain. So while it's not easy to do, this internal resolution can begin by approaching a problem with uninhibited toddler-like joy. Thank you so much for listening. Um, please get in touch with me. I'm available to talk immediately after or if you wanna email me. Um, Happy to discuss any dimension of this. If you disagree with the thesis, 
or the details of the code, I'd, I'd love to hear about it. So thank you.